The MAME emulator has been redeveloped into several different variations. One of those variations happens to be part of RetroArt, and you may be very surprised to find out just what exactly makes this variation one that you may want to take a look at. Built on version 0.78 of XMAME, the 2003 Plus Core, which became available during 1.7.4 of RetroArt, is an experimental core that aims to take advantage of all the amazing features that the application has to offer. Unlike its MAME counterparts, 2003 Plus is fully configurable in the RetroArch UI when it comes to controller support, but this is just where things begin. One of its biggest benefits is the use of the run ahead feature. There is also the implementation of save states, a necessary part of RetroArch's NetPlay functionality. So let's take a deeper look into some of the other options that the 2003 Plus Core has to offer. I recommend updating your RetroArch to at least the latest stable build as version 1.7.6 is now available. I'm unsure if the core has been updated from its initial release, so if you've already downloaded it, I recommend doing so again in case. MAME set 0.93 and lower are compatible with the core, but it's recommending that you roll back certain games that may have been changed and use CLR MAME Pro to update or fix your set. It is also advised that you use non-merged sets. For this example, I'm going with a favorite of mine, Final Fight. I will load the game as normal and toggle to the quick menu so we can take a look at a few options that are specifically designed for this MAME core. If you want to bring up the original MAME menu, choose this option. When you toggle out of the quick menu, it will instantly bring it up. You will need to switch it off in the quick menu to get rid of it. The backdrop artwork option is used for games that require it. The used CD soundtrack is one of the main features that I definitely want to make you aware of. It has the ability to use tracks taken from other systems like the Sega CD, replacing the original arcade soundtrack so that players can experience perfect arcade play with the benefits of a remastered soundtrack. In order to make this work, you'll need to add the soundtrack to the system folder. When you run the core for the first time, this creates a folder for the core. Once inside, you just need to create a folder named Samples and put the contents inside. This applies to other games that also use samples as well. Soundtracks can be kept in a zip file and do not need to be unpacked. I'll leave a link to some original Sega CD tracks in the description box below. You will need to close out the game completely and restart it in order for this to work. If you are planning to use NetPlay, I believe turning this on is recommended. However, if you and the individual you are playing with both remapped your buttons, this may lead to issues with gameplay. The 4-way joystick tries to emulate 4-way control on 8-way joysticks for classic arcade games that used it like Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, and q -Bert. I believe the rotated 4-way option will give you the desired effect. Let's take a quick look at the control menu. Players have the option of switching device type to default control mappings. Classic Gamepad includes the PlayStation Xbox 360 style of mapping. Six button mapping follows the SNES style, and eight button follows the newer fight stick style of mapping. Depending on the game, you may just see actual naming conventions for the buttons making it easier for you to configure things properly. As I mentioned earlier, the run ahead feature is available, just be mindful that certain games may not work properly and exhibit strange behavior during gameplay. I especially found this to be the case after adding the CD soundtrack to Final Fight. That is pretty much all there is to it. This is just the first of many walkthroughs for RetroArch cores, so make sure to like and subscribe as more are on the way. For now, this is The Core, your resident entertainment techie, signing out.